Atlanta Community Profiles, a show about living in Atlanta and purchasing a home here. Atlanta Community Profiles is hosted by Lou Whelan, who will talk to experts who know this ever-changing city and its real estate industry. We'll talk to mayors, community leaders, and residential real estate experts. Now, here's Lou Whelan with this week's Atlanta Community Profiles. Hello there and welcome to our show. My name is Lou Whelan. I publish the official relocation guides uh, on Atlanta uh, We have pub- that are distributed by the first multiple listing service of Atlanta. We have publications for the metro area, uh, for North Fulton in partnership with the North Fulton Chamber of Commerce, one for Gwinnett County in partnership with the Gwinnett Chamber, one for Cobb County in partnership with the Cobb Association of Realtors, and one for Inside 285. They're available in the uh, Chambers of Commerce and Realtors as well as in the all of the uh, first multiple listing service of Atlanta stores. And they're free of charge. They're available on my website, atlantacommunityprofiles.com, along with a great deal of, of other information about Atlanta. I'm also a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Georgia Properties. So I can help you with any of your real estate needs, residential, commercial, or investment. My website is lewwheelan.com, W-I-E-L-A-N-D. Be happy to help you. Um, with your uh, interest and needs, um, questions as well. As you know, every week we interview community leaders, people who are contributing to the well-being of um, of our city. And um, today we have uh, two special guests, um, Mark Lowell, Executive Director of St. George Village and Chairman of the Leading Edge Georgia Board of Realtors, and Ginny Helms, President and CEO of Leading Edge Georgia. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lou. Great to have you on the show. Great to be here with you. Yeah, great to be here. So, um, Mark is a graduate of the University of Maine and University of New Hampshire School of Health Management and Policy. He has 25 years of experience in working with senior living, which is a large and growing segment of our population. He currently serves as executive director for Wesley Woods Management Company, where he's responsible for leadership and management of St. George Village in Roswell, and not far from where I live, a two hundred, which is a 220 apartment home life plan, uh, community, planned community owned by the Catholic Archdiocese of Atlanta. Mark is a certified Eden at Home associate, and we'll learn about that. Today he has a passion for leading, educating, and operationalizing person-directed, centered, person-directed slash centered services and care practices all across all service lines within the forms of senior living communities. And we'll get him to give us a layman's explanation of that in the show. And uh, Jenny is CEO of Leading Edge Georgia, a statewide association that represents over 170 mission-driven organizations dedicated to providing quality housing health care, and community-based services. Prior to this, she was uh, vice president of the chapter services and public policy of the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, 25 years tenure with the Alzheimer's Association. She helped develop a number of programs, including programs for people living with early-stage dementia. She has a bachelor's degree from Oglethorpe and a graduate certificate of gerontology and Maybe you don't know what that is, but we'll find out uh-huh. from Georgia State and currently serves on the governor's older adult cabinet. So, Mark, it's great. Uh, we have met with you in your office in the past a couple of times and great to ha- have you <clears throat> on the show with us. And um, so let me ask you this question and uh, about the association. What what uh, and Jenny, what. Um, what, maybe you could define the leading a leading age Georgia for layman's. <laughs> okay, <laughs> in well, layman's terms, leading age Georgia is a trade association, and it's made up of uh, about 170 mission-driven members. Uh, our membership is primarily nonprofit, although we do have some for-profit organizations that are members, and we represent the full aging continuum of services from adult day services 
to um, affordable housing, HUD housing, to uh, high-end uh, retirement communities, um, which we call life plan communities. Uh, so we represent 126,000 elder Georgians uh, are part of uh, who we represent uh, here in the state of Georgia. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. This is not um, something that I had really planned to ask you, but it, it did occur to me because I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day whose mother has um, Alzheimer's, mm. uh, no, dementia. And I asked him this question, and um, I still didn't really understand. <laughs> what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Well, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia is a much broader scope of diseases that, uh, that uh, basically represent co uh, people who develop some form of cognitive impairment. So dementia is the broad, the broad brush um, term that's used. Alzheimer's is a, very, is a more specific type of uh, disease diagnosis. Of course, it's very hard to diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Um, and, uh, but, um, but that's kind of the, the, how I think, ab think about it. Ginny, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'd like to add that some memory changes are normal as we age. And if anybody over 50 tells you they're not having some memory challenges, you probably need to see if they tell the truth or not. They probably forgot. Right. But anytime <laughs> there's significant changes in memory or thinking, remembering, and reasoning, there's a medical condition behind it. And, there, and people should see a physician and get a good evaluation for it. And there are a number of reasons for that, one of which is, some of the things causing the memory loss might be treated. For example, if somebody's having some um, small strokes, if they get on the right medications for managing blood pressure, it might save them from having the big stroke. And if it's a hormone imbalance, that could potentially be fixed. And then even if it is Alzheimer's, there are medications that can both stimulate the cognition, but also some that might, like an antidepressant, that might help with the anxiety associated with it. In addition, it also tells folks you need to be looking out for the safety, whether it's the finances or the living arrangements and things like that. So um, if, uh, anytime there's a significant change in thinking, remembering, and reasoning, someone should see, see their physician. How much is genetically driven versus environmental? That's a great question. We still don't know the, the cause of the cure of dementia, and, but what we do know is the number one factor is age that at age 65, only about 3% of the population has Alzheimer's or another form of dementia, but every five years that doubles. So age is the biggest risk factor. And the second one is having a mother, father, brother, sister who has it. Then the risk is up. Um, but other than that, we don't really understand the environmental causes, but what we do know is that there are some places, even like Emory here in town, that are looking at the different things, such as lifestyle. So, you know, research is showing uh, the more we exercise, and I can tell you do, and eat right, Thank then you. the better uh, <laughs> we are at managing the risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, nutrition and uh, exercise are key elements in uh, protecting oneself against that disease, and it is a disease. It is generally kind of defined as a disease. For us. Yes, mm -hmm. you're, you're exactly right. Alzheimer's is characterized as a disease, and you're right on what you said about diet and exercise. And the Alzheimer's Association hosts international conferences every year. And that's one of the things the researchers have been saying for the last number of years and is that uh, diet and exercise do make a big difference. And a lot of times people say, why? Well, when it comes to Alzheimer's, we don't really know exactly what role it plays in that. But we do know that the healthier the vascular system is, the healthier the brain is. When you think about the fact that we rely on the vascular system to bring the oxygen and all to the brain, and um, you've got to keep your vascular system healthy. And so that's where um, both diet and exercise play a big role. The uh, aerobic exercise yes. is a key factor. It and is. But the researchers will tell us a good walk maybe five times, four or five times a week makes a big difference too. And that's something we can do, uh, all of us, no matter where we live and what condition. And the other thing is that falls help with um, core strength, which helps prevent falls. So that's important. There are many great benefits of walking. 
Well, in, in people keeping engaged is so important, Lou. Um, having, um, having friends, having a really good network, uh, keeping active in your community, finding things to keep yourself busy, learning new hobbies, things like that are all things that people can do, that seniors can do, as well as young people can do. So there's, a, there's definitely uh, ageism pr- present in our society. And one of the things that Leading Age Georgia does and our national association, Leading Age National, are working hard at trying to break through some barriers on ageism you know, because people think as people get older that they're not presenting as much value to our society when indeed elders are doing great things every day, all the way up into their 90s, even at 100 or 104 years of age. I have to interrupt you right mm-hmm. there. We're going to, uh, my producer just gave me the evil eye, so got a commercial break. Very good. Be right back after the break. Hello there, and welcome back. I'm Lou Whelan, sitting here with Mark Lowell, Executive Director of St. George Village in Roswell, and Ginny Helms, President and CEO of uh, Leader Leading Edge Georgia, the statewide association that represents over 170 mission-driven organizations dedicated to providing quality housing, health care, and community-based services. And um, if you missed the uh, any part of the show it's on my website without commercials uh, L- atlanta community and um i'm sorry i had to interrupt you there mark but if you would mind just picking up there if you can i was just uh, commenting on ageism lou and one of uh, uh one of our missions as a trade association is to work on uh, educating society uh and trying to stamp out ageism the fact that elders can contribute significantly all through their life journey. And, um, and we see it every day with the, the residents that we work with. But yet many people think that because you're getting old, your value is diminishing. And so um, we really uh, do not look at um, the lives of the seniors we serve in that way. People can learn and grow and continue to do great things all through their life, all the way to the very end. And that's uh, one of the things that we work really hard at doing every day. The um, uh, 55 plus or 60 plus or 65 plus, do you have a uh, age that you kind of use as a benchmark? St. George Village, uh, our bonds require people that move into St. George Village to be 62 years of age or older. 62. 62. Now, um, what you what is the proportion, let's say, maybe of our population that would be in that cat age range? And I think it is growing. Is that not true? Well, proportionally, uh, there's uh, ten thousand uh, people every day turn sixty five years of age right now mm-hmm. in our society. So the the baby boomer generation really starts to hit in about, I think, 2020, uh, when uh, between 2020 and 2050, we're going to see a dramatic increase in the number of seniors in our society. Okay. So, and of course, you've seen a lot of building around Atlanta with um, new senior living providers popping up um, in many communities getting ready for that age wave. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's very interesting. So that I, I can see why. And um, how do you think? What does that impact? How does that impact society? Do you suppose? And you have people with uh, great minds are looking at that. I'm sure right now. And I, Atlanta Regional Commission and yeah. other organizations are trying to figure out exactly that what the impact of that will be on society. Well, one one of the things that we're looking at, Lou. Um, for Leading Age Georgia and for St. George Village, too, is um, we're really concerned about developing the workforce. So um, with these rising population levels of elders and all of these new elder care communities coming online, there's definitely a need for um, more uh, workers in our profession. And I think that we haven't done a good job of letting um, schools know and the public in general about the fact that there are lots of really great jobs in um, senior living and there are jobs all the way from the executive suite to uh, working in the housekeeping department um, uh, waiters and waitresses in our dining rooms uh, uh, many supervisory type of positions and so uh, one of our items in our strategic plan now is we're looking at how we can do a better job of working with high schools and vocational schools and getting the word out about uh, what a great sector of society we are. We have great jobs, really nice work environments. Uh, we offer great, um, we, uh, very competitive pay, wages, benefit packages. And uh, there's a lot of job opportunities for um, people um, to come into our profession, but I think there's a lot of people right now who aren't aware of that. What kind of a curriculum would one take, and or what kind of curriculums are offered, and where are they offered for that industry? Well, I would um, I would say uh, that uh, certainly many uh, four-year uh, college education college uh, environments offer degrees in many of the different fields that affect senior living. For example, health management policy was one for me at University of New Hampshire, but there are many of those programs all around the state of Georgia. But um, there are nursing schools for registered nurses. There are vocational schools that provide licensed practical nurse training, um, certified nursing assistant training. Um, there are um, a lot of uh, in environments like that where people can go and go to a two-year program and come right out of school, uh, get a year or two experience, and um, they've got a really good job with good benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, that, uh, that is uh, helpful to know because a lot of people are uh, very confused by the time they get as I was in high school in my senior year, and my son and daughter were both, you know, very not too sure what they wanted to get into. And so I appreciate that. That sounds very encouraging. Well, it, it, the other benefit of that profession, of course, beside the fact that there, there is often a lot of job security, too, but, you know, we work in a field where you really give of yourself and you give of your heart, and you have an opportunity to have a, a big impact on everybody that you come in contact with every day. And for me, um, that gives me tremendous job satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I love going to work every day. My job is very different every day. I can open the door to my office and I might have my day all planned out, but there's a lot of new things that develop um, overnight or over the course of the day that um, force me to change the way I'm doing my job. So it's, it's not your typical nine to five job it's uh, a lot of different things coming at you and lots of different ways to make an impact. Well, as long as we're on that subject, uh, we might as well just ask, ask you to just define your, your, um, your uh, facility, St. George Village in Roswell. Just take a quick second and define sure. what you do and how you are unique. Um, St. George Village and other uh, communities like it uh, used to be called Continuing Care Retirement Communities. And about three years ago, our national association decided we needed to rebrand it because people really didn't understand the continuing care piece of it. And, uh, and what, we, what we learned was that people really resonate toward the idea of planning their future, which 
is what I would say when you're 65 and you're thinking about growing older and what you, where you want to be, and if you ever need long-term care, the most important thing anybody can do is prepare a plan and be thinking ahead. So, um, so we are a life plan community, and we work with um, um, seniors who are 62 and older. Um, they, what they do is they move into our environment. It's like a hotel, and we have a hotel with healthcare services attached to it. And so uh, when people move in, they know where they're going to be getting their future health care, and that's what really provides them uh, peace of mind and security to know they're, they're all set and their families also know that their parents are well cared for. So they can just focus on living their lives and, and enjoying their time with their friends and with their family. Stay tuned. We'll be right back and learning a lot more about the association and about St. George Village. Welcome back. I'm Lou Whelan with, here with Mark Lowell, Executive Director of St. George Village, um, and Ginny Helms, who is the President and CEO of Leading Edge Georgia. And um, I wondered if you might just um, define uh, Leading Edge Georgia once again, just as succinctly as possible, in terms of your mission and scope. Thank you. We're an association that represents the mission-driven organizations that serve seniors. So everybody from the adult day to the affordable HUD housing to uh, nursing homes and life plan communities. And basically, we really train them to help them provide the best possible care for individuals that they serve. And one of the things that I like to say is that our generation is raised with the commercial from Burger King, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. And I think that the challenge is is that in the past, so much of retirement housing, particularly long-term care, has been focused on the medical needs of an individual. Well, we're all about helping to provide the needs that the individual says as their needs. So it's very individualized, person-centered care, and we also really support well-being. And so we're doing that through extensive training on a couple of different models so that when somebody comes to a home like St. George Village, They know they can be happy there. They know that they're not going to be kind of like put away. So it's a really good environment that they can feel good about. I know that you on your websites, your respective websites, you talk about person, persons driven care and the need for the desire for as much independence as one can have. And how tell me how that plays out with, with your residents. Uh, well, uh, how that plays out is really it, it goes about s- setting a mindset as a team with uh, your coworkers about the, the philosophy that you're going to employ every day for how you work with the seniors that you serve. So, so a person-directed care really is about um, engagement and getting to know people really, really well. And understand, we call it understanding a resident's life story because everybody's different. And we're trying to understand early on what it is that people like, do not like, um, and what can we do to tailor our services or modify our systems to help meet the needs of the people that we serve every day. So it, it really is about a philosophy. And, um, um, and, 
at St. George Village, we use a philosophy called the Eden Alternative, which is um, an org international organization that was founded in the 1990s by a, a, a physician and internist named Dr. Bill Thomas. And Dr. Thomas was a, a graduate from Harvard. He became a medical director in a nursing home. And after he worked in the nursing home for a year, one of his residents, um, uh, who was a female, um, asked him to come back into her room. Um, and she looked at him and said, Dr. Bill, I am so lonely. I'm so lonely. What can you do? And, you know, he, after that exchange, he really gave it a lot of thought, and he went in to see the nursing home administrator and the director of nursing and said, you know, I'm the medical director here, but I'm not having much of an impact on what really is ailing these people because they're suffering from loneliness, helplessness, and boredom. And those are the three plagues of elders um, that we have to stop and focus on every single day that we come to work. And actually, Dr. Thomas started the Eden Alternative, and the number one principle is um, the three plagues of elders, uh, stopping loneliness, helplessness, and boredom. So person-directed care, our primary focus every day is to look at you know, how are the people that we're serving um, and how do we make sure that we keep loneliness, helplessness, and boredom at bay where, wherever a resident calls home. So it could be in an adult day health center or it could be in a life plan community like St. George Village, but the Eden Alternative has an opportunity to impact any care environment. So yeah, that's... Um, so. How do you do that? Do you promote that through is it engagement with each other or promoting group activity or what do you what what is the what are some of the techniques and strategies? And I think um, one of the things that we do is we encourage our uh, we educate first of all from orientation we educate about um, the Eden alternative we educate about loneliness helplessness and boredom in the plagues and then we educate how, what are the things that we can do to combat the plagues? So how do we help to keep somebody from, how to identify where loneliness, helplessness, and boredom may be taking place? And then what are the things that our employees can do to impact that on each particular resident? So it's really training them how to identify and then also how they can act or how they can communicate to people so that we can focus more on what's going on with the resident. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. I'm Lou Whelan sitting here with Mark Lowell, Executive Director of St. George Village in Roswell, which is a 220 apartment home life plan community development. And I might say, might add, it is extremely beautiful and a great environment. Um, and also, uh, our guest, Jenny Helms, is President and CEO of Leading Edge Georgia association that represents over 170 mission-driven organizations uh, providing quality housing and health care and community-based services. So, um, Loneliness, helplessness, and what was the other? Boredom. Boredom is a key factor as we age, you know, and um, for those of us who live longer, and which is a, an increasing segment of the population or the the lifespan is getting longer more and more people are living longer and more and more people are aging just because of baby boomer generations Mm -hmm. so how do we promote that how do we help these people strategically and uh, to uh, enjoy life more i think uh i think lou one one of the things that we do in our environment is we're doing everything to deinstitutionalize the things that we do. We want, we want, we want seniors to feel at home wherever, wherever, wherever they are, and um, and and so one of the things that you had just said about St. George Village, we're not 222 units, we're not 222 beds, we're 222 homes, and we really think it, it really a lot of what person directed care is about um, looking at the language that we use too. So, you know, when we talk about, we're really trying to build community and we want a resident to feel at home wherever they are. So we're trying to really focus hard on creating home and helping our, um, we, we do not use the term employee at St. George Village, we use the term care partner. Because one of the important things in person-directed care is really working and striving toward putting the decisions in the hands of the people who are working closest to the people that we're serving. So we, um, when we use the term care partner, and I actually have care partner on my name tag, it really, it was, it's very symbolic, but what it does is it flattens the hierarchy of the organization. And so what we do then is we, we start to begin on our training with our care partners to say, you know, you know Mrs. Jones better than anybody. We really need you to be working closely, you know, with um, our team here to help in understanding and, ed- and helping us to understand Mrs. Jones and to communicate to the rest of the team the things that she really likes to do and how we can better serve her. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, it, it's about that kind of training, about that kind of learning um, teaching care partners to how valuable it is to communicate information, uh, but also how to learn to, to get that information. Um, and a lot of our residents want to know the same information about our, our care partners. So they want to get to know them almost as much as sure. our care partners need to get to know the residents. So. Sure. Well, the key thing is... Um preventative <laughs> you know that's as as we get older and how do we um avoid loneliness and um so and and how do we take care of uh, ourselves so that we don't get into that situation such as health fitness nutrition aerobic exercise mental exercise so um what kind of advice would you give to uh Children, really, I guess children are important to the well-being of their parents and to the elderly themselves. How would you, and um, we didn't, we really didn't get a chance to talk about the money part too much, but that's a key thing, too, is finances are increasing, charges and prices are rising, inflation. But anyway, Jenny, what would you say to people? What kind of advice would you give to the people I, out there then in this situation? I think you covered a lot of great things. I think one thing to think about is that everybody wants to be as independent as they are, as they can be. And that means a lot of people want to stay in their homes, and as long as they can do so safely, great. That's a great option. But to, be, to ensure 
um, independence. One needs to manage their blood pressure, their cholesterol, their blood sugar, and their inflammation. And so that means the diet, the exercise, and it also means I think a spiritual uh, connection really helps people go a long way in terms of dealing with the loneliness and grounding a person. And I think that the socialization really helps. And I think the sense of community helps a lot. And so whether someone lives in their own home or lives in a retirement community, building your tribe is so vitally important. Friends, family that we care about can help us have the best quality of life. And one of the things that I want to say is that I think it's important that people really think about it and that they really put away money to pay for it because a lot of people are surprised when it comes to time to move into senior housing. And if a person can make the decision themselves, like a lot of the people who move into St. George Village do, then they're happier. And if they do like a lady told me at a Canterbury Court and move in early to build her own tribe, they can be even happier. So I think this just needs some thought for future planning. Expenses are rising in proportion to government programs like Medicare and Medicaid and that sort of thing, too. Uh, so what would you recommend to deal with that? I think you're exactly right, and that we need to do a couple things. One, we need to all buy long-term care insurance while we're young enough to do it. And then we all need to lobby and help fortify and keep Medicare and Medicaid safe and available for those who need it. Thank you, uh, Jenny and Mark. Appreciate your being on the show and providing some helpful information to people out there. We're all getting older, <laughs> but it is better than the alternative, right? That's correct. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Stay tuned now for Dr. Bill Williams, Chairman and CEO of Swanee Dental Care, our dental health expert.